Do you know tension members are used as bracings in steel buildings? In this lecture, I will talk about design of tension members in steel buildings. This is part five of lecture series on steel design. For other parts, please see the links in description down below. Hey friends, if you're new here, I am Dr. Javed Qureshi, a senior lecturer at a London University. On this channel, we explore technical and human skills to help us lead more productive, happy and examined life. Design of tension members is, is actually one of the most simple exercise. But first, where do we use these tension members? I think I shouldn't have put lots of pictures here. So it will give you lots of clues. A very simple example is bracing. Which bracing is always designed as a tension member. And also in trusses, you can see in trusses and you can see this cable state bridges and suspension bridges. So tension members are pretty much everywhere. So what shapes can we use for tension members? Pretty much you can use any shape for a tension member. But for bracing, the most common ones are are plate bar and leg angles. So there are special provisions for leg angles, which I will not discuss here, but provisions are there. How do we design tension members? In my opinion, its basic design is very simple. All you need to do is to provide sufficient cross-sectional area. Tension members and bracings. So how do we design tension members? So I have cross bracing and loading is applied when loading. One of the member, I have applied load and ED. It means that it is a design load. It is applied load. So applied load directly. Obviously, there is a way to find out this applied load. Is say 200 kilonewton. So applied load is 200 kilonewton. Now I want to design this bracing. How do I design it? So first of all, in very simple terms, how do I find out axial capacity or NTRD or tensile capacity? The formula for NTRD, RD means the capacity in very simple terms. Or if you even don't know NTRD, you say that AFY, area of the section times FY. Obviously with your code, you will have to multiply it with the gamma factors. Now this is the capacity or resistance. And this is applied, applied design load. Obviously, this is factored. Now, how do I design this bracing? Force in this one is worked out as 200 kilonewton. So we can rearrange the equation for the time being. I'm assuming that applied and capacity are equal. Actually, capacity has to be larger. So for the time being, if I assume that, then I will have an ED equal to AFY. I'm using, say, S275 steel, although we have S35 steel as well, So for which FY is 275 Newton per, per millimeter square. And ED, by rearranging, I will have required area, area equal to NED over FY. NED is 200 divided by 275. I'm converting this NED, which is in kilonewton, into newtons, so that I have consistent units for area. Now, remember that if if the units are here, unit for Fy is Newton per millimeter square, my resulting unit will be millimeter square. 200 times 1000 divided by 275, 727. You could use pretty much any section for this one part of the bracing. If I say that I'm using a flat plate, 10 millimeter. Now, flat plate is not available in, in section tables. Here of this flat plate will be 80 times 10, 800 millimeter square. Will, will it be sufficient to provide a good section? Yes. Yeah. So you you could say that use flat plate S275 or in real life, in practical life, the common thicknesses for these flat plates for, for bracings are 8, 10 and 12 millimeters. Assume the thickness and then increase the width of the plate. If I am very innovative, if I want to use circular hollow sections, because circular hollow sections are available in 355, they are not available in 275, so I will have to revise my formula. First of all, I will choose a section with the area which is higher than my required one. Required one is 7 to 7 millimeter square or 72, sorry, 7 0.27 uh, centimeters square. Having a look at here, these are the areas of sections. I can probably use this one 88.9 diameter, 3.2 wall thickness, circular hollow sections, can't I? Yeah. 88.9 into 3.2. This is dia and this is wall thickness. CHS circular hollow sections. Its area is 862 millimeter square, which is higher than my required area. To work out the capacity, because CHS is only available in 355, my initial assumption was 275. So I will work out the revised capacity. 862 times 355 times 10 raised minus 3 to convert it into kilonewtons. 306. The reason I've used this because I used CHS for which FY is only available in 355. It's not available in 275. 
So my resistance is higher than applied. Applied is 200 and resistance is 306. Means, sure. means this is okay as well. So now you know the basic level of tension members. You can see that the required area is equal to force over material strength. All you need to do is simply provide the required area in the same way as I mentioned earlier. The steps are that NED, that is applied load, divided by NTRD, that is the capacity, should be less than or equal to 1, which means that the capacity has to be high. In our case, in the example, we had 200 divided by initially, I think, 220. Later, when we use CHS, it was 200 divided by 306, which is certainly less than 1. Right? And we use this first formula. But obviously, according to code, you have to use NTRD, which is smaller of these two. Certainly, you would say that, okay, there will be uh, old holes. It will be, it's going to be connected. So that's why we will need this A net or net area. Right? NTRD has to be lesser of these two values. So pretty much in everything, we will compare apply versus the resistance. So NTRD is the tensile resistance. Now tensile resistance, this is smaller of these two NPL rd plastic resist nurd nplrd is the one which i used little earlier and nurd i will show you in a minute so this is the same formula only addition is gamma m naught which is one according to euro code annexure and then we have this formula where we use ultimate tensile strength. Now 0.9 is a factor to account for eccentricities, stress concentrations, and A net is the net area. Now what does it mean by net area? Net area means that taking into account holes. Obviously these bracings, they need to be connected. FU is ultimate tensile strength, which we get from table 3.1. It is from Eurocode. Gamma M0 is a factor, which is 1.1. From this table, for different steel grades, we get FY and we get FU. So we always have to refer to this table. And most of the steel sections, they are less than 40 millimeter. So you don't have to worry about it. Now you can see that yield and ultimate, they are less for when the thickness of the section is more than 40. The reason is that there are stress concentrations, there are residual stresses, when the sections become thick, they trap lots of residual stresses. As a result, yield is reduced. Now, how do we work out A net? A net is area of the sections minus summation of all holes times the thickness. So whatever holes are there, then you times it by thickness. This is A net for non-staggered bolts. But if you have staggered bolts, this formula, so the net area has to be minimum of the following, where A is the total area, E is the thickness, and number of holes extending in diagonal zigzag line, these are two, okay? And S is the staggered pitch, which is somewhere here. P is the perpendicular pitch between these bolts. This is the formula. And now I will come to the uh, design. Work out the axial load and choose a cross section. Determine Fy and Fu from table one, table 3.1, and then calculate A or A net, and then work out NTRD from these two formula and use the lesser of these two. NED over NTRD means that applied versus the capacity should be less than or equal to one. Now, in this example, this is a similar example. We have AT by 10 plate and S275. It's the same example. Only difference is that previously we did not consider a hole. So two M20 bolts are considered here. Yeah. But now as the bolts are in line, so it is going to fail only at one part. So summation of holes will be only one times D naught. This is M20, so D0 is going to be 2 millimeter higher than that. So D0 will be 22 millimeter. Area is 800 millimeter, and FY and FU we determined from table 3.1. We will need FU. Yeah. A net is equal to summation of gross minus D0 T because these are in series. So only one hole is going to detach, it's going to fail. That's why D0 is summation is only one. Now we get A net as 580. If we put this, this is the same thing as we did earlier this is the different one so 580 is a net which we worked out f u we worked out from table 5.1 gamma is a factor so we get this 204 now we have to choose the lesser of these two the lesser is 204 ntrd will be 204 kilonewton and then ned over ntrd should be less than or equal to one